Defendants' response and opposition to state's emergency motion for gag order and injunction. Defendant Eligio Bishop, by and through his undersigned counsel, files his response and objection to the state of Georgia's emergency motion for gag order and injunction and respectfully prays that the court deny the state's motion in its entirety, showing the court further as follows. One, the state's motion for a gag order should be denied. Legal authority and analysis. Prior restraints on speech and publication are the most serious and the least tolerable infringement on First Amendment rights. Accordingly, the proponent of a prior restraint bears a heavy burden of showing justification for the imposition of such a restraint. United States Constitution, Amendment 1. See also WXIA TV versus State, 303 Georgia 428, 434, 2018. Although prior restraints are not unconstitutional in all circumstances, they are presumably unconstitutional. To decide whether the presumption has been overcome, the court has to determine whether the gravity of the evil discounted by its improbability justifies such invasion of free speech as is necessary to avoid the danger. See WXIA TV at page 435. This requires a consideration of the probable extent of pretrial media coverage, the nature of that coverage, and the likely impact of that coverage on potential jurors, whether alternative measures might as effectively mitigate the prejudicial impact of pretrial coverage, and the probable efficacy of prior restraint on publication as a workable method of protecting the accused right to a fair trial. Here within its motion, the state describes the evil as dissemination of the alleged victim's name or identity, harassment of the alleged victim, and dissuading the alleged victim from testifying in court. These enumerated evils must be discounted by their improbability and any invasion of free speech necessary to avoid the danger. The defendant submits to the court that the dissemination complained of by the state poses no danger of the proffered evils. This is because not only has the alleged victim herself publicized her involvement in the case, she has made it known even most recently at the defendant's bond hearing held on June 2nd, 2023, that she is fully committed to keeping the defendant incarcerated. It is illogical for the state to argue that the defendant should be prevented from speaking publicly about his criminal record or the lack thereof, the fact that he's been offered a plea deal, exculpatory statements made or given by the alleged victim or any of the witnesses or his declaration of innocence due to the victim's perception of this as speech as harassment or undue influence. Black's Law Dictionary defines harassment as words, conduct, or action, repeated or persistent, that being directed at a specific person annoys, alarms, or causes substantial emotional distress in that person and serves no legitimate purpose. Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, 2007. The state has not established support for its contention because it has not shown that defendant statements have been directed at a particular person and that the state 
ignores the legitimate purpose for which Mr. Bishop has spoken out. He believes his rights to life and liberty have been taken away in violation of the U.S. and Georgia constitutions. Defendant is also publicly voicing his concerns about the case at hand because he believes the court's denial of his motion for bond amounts to excessive bail in violation of the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution and Article 1, Section 1, Paragraph 17 of the Constitution of the State of Georgia. Essentially, defendant believes that injustice has occurred in his case and that there is a vital social interest served by the dissemination of information about the events having legal consequences and about the legal proceedings themselves. Moreover, there are certain subjects which are more likely than not to have no material prejudicial effect on a proceeding. Examples of these subjects are matters such as the defense involved, a warning of danger concerning the behavior of a person involved. When there is reason to believe that there exists the likelihood of substantial harm to the public interest and the identity of investigating and arresting officers or agencies and the length of the investigation. As such, the state's motion for a gag order should be denied. Two, the state's request for a protective order should be denied. Legal authority and analysis. OCGA 17-17-16B1 states the following important part. B1, a superior court upon application of a prosecuting attorney shall issue a temporary restraining order prohibiting harassment of a victim or a witness in a criminal case if the court finds from specific facts shown by affidavit or by verified complaint that there are reasonable grounds to believe that harassment of an in- identified victim or witness in a criminal case exists or that such order is necessary to prevent and restrain an offense under Code Section 1610.32 or 16-10-93. For the reasons aforementioned above, harassment does not exist on the facts of this case. Furthermore, the state has not provided specific facts shown by affidavit or by verified complaint to support its contentions. The fact that the state feels it necessary for this court to issue a protective order against defendant's counsel to prevent harassment is incorrect, inco- incongruous, incongruous with the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to the assistance of counsel for the, his defense. The state's only allegation with respect to defense counsel is that on or about April the 11th, 2023, the state shared certain discovery material with attorney Jernisha Davis, counsel for defendant. This discovery was provided to defense counsel because the Georgia Rules of Professional Conduct requires that the prosecutor in a criminal case shall make timely disclosure to the defense of all evidence or information known to the prosecutor that tends to negate the guilt of the accused or that mitigates the offense. There has been absolutely no showing that the defense counsel publicly published or caused to be published the discovery material in this case. Without further order of the court, should the court grant the state's request for a protective order against defense counsel, the court will be in effect preventing defense counsel from effectively representing defendant. This is because, as it currently stands, defense counsel has an unfettered duty to share defendant's discovery with him in in this case. In accordance with the foregoing, 
the state's request for a protective order is not warranted on the facts of this case and should be denied. Three, the state's motion for an injunction should be denied. For all the reasons mentioned supra, the state's request for an injunction should be denied. In the alternative, should the court order Google LLC doing business as YouTube and Meta Platforms Incorporated, Facebook Incorporated, to remove all videos from its website containing the alleged victim's name, identifying information, or information relating to the above case, the court should enforce its order as it relates to favorable and unfavorable information relating to the alleged victim and this case alike. In any event, the defendant believes the state's request is overly broad, would be an extreme measure, measure of censorship, and should be denied. Four, the state's request for an an order suspending the defendant's phone, video, and messaging privileges should be denied. As previously explained for the reasons provided throughout the defendant's response, the state's request should be denied and defendant's full privileges restored. The state's request for any other relief should be denied. Respectfully submitted this 12th day of June, 2023, Jernisha Davis, Esquire, Attorney for Defendant.